As some of you may have seen, Porsche has patented a six-stroke engine design, and even though the idea of a six-stroke engine is actually not something new, you can trace it back as far as the 1800s in fact, this particular form is promising because of a couple of things put together. Number one, the people involved. I have a huge amount of respect for Porsche, in fact, over time, after driving a few of their cars, looking into their extremely successful arc over the past two decades in particular since the KN, which I think is one of the best vehicles they ever made in terms of a marketing decision, they are a massively capable brand. Pretty much everything they turn their attention to, they succeed in. From Le Mans to supercars to sports cars, even to electric vehicles, the Taycan is arguably one of the most desirable electric cars, even if you're not a fan of them. And as far as this being a concept or a vaporware pie in the sky thing, they've actually already filed for the patent on this particular version of the six stroke. Now, like I said, it has been done before. About a decade ago, there was a six stroke diesel concept. This one is mostly focused on improving the fuel efficiency, the thermal efficiency, and reducing the emissions of the engine. And in particular, it makes so much sense for Porsche to do this because their engines are naturally much more compact. And even though the 911, for example, has gotten a lot bigger, it's still a relatively compact engine compared to a lot of other cars in the sports car and especially supercar world. Another reason why I find this fascinating is because of Porsche, along with a few other brands, real push on synthetic fuels. That's something which I'm really, really hoping comes to fruition because it's my belief, and I think I've said this before on the channel, I really strongly believe that electric cars are going to be the next diesels, which is that all the governments really push like, oh yeah, this is the best thing, get this next, get this next, and then 10, 15 years down the line, well, it's not as good as we thought it was, now we're going to put the prices up. Because with electric cars, for example, you're literally just moving the emissions upstream from the car to the factory. Diesels are still great, but they're still ostracized these days. Electric, I think, is going the same way, and ultimately, you know damn well that if they come up with a decent synthetic synthetic fuel, so many people are going to go back to that, especially in the performance car world, because we miss the sound, the charisma, the personality, and just that more traditional experience where you don't have to worry about where the next charging point is. So what's the actual difference with this particular version of the six-stroke? Well, it has a two-cycle crank, two concentric circles, which you can refer to as an analyst, and this double cycle, if you will, reduces the piston distance that it has to travel, and one of the key improvements, if not, you could argue, the key, certainly from a performance perspective, is having power on every third stroke rather than once every four strokes. And in practice, of course, the four-stroke cycle, commonly referred to as suck, squeeze, bang, blow, which is induction, compression, combustion, and exhaust. So in that traditional four-stroke cycle, for maybe younger viewers who are not familiar with how an engine works, if you imagine it like a syringe, if you pull it down, that's stroke number one. The piston goes down in the cylinder, air and fuel is drawn into the cylinder above the piston, then you have the second stroke, which is squeeze or the compression. Imagine that plunger in the syringe is returning back up the cylinder, the piston's coming back up, compresses that air fuel ratio against the top of the cylinder, which of course is where your spark plug is. That leads to the next phase, the third stroke, which is bang, the combustion stroke. A tiny electrical spark happens from your spark plug at the top, igniting that compressed air fuel mixture. Of course, causes a tiny controlled explosion, pushing the piston back down. And then the final one, when the piston returns back up, is of course, now that your exhaust valve is open at the top, it pushes those burnt gases out of the cylinder and out of your exhaust to begin the process again. This time, that cycle is slightly different. So the cycle now is intake, compression, power, compression, power, exhaust. And as I said, you have that power stroke every third rather than once every four. And that makes a huge difference. This engine type, for example, can be as efficient as 45 to 50% thermal efficiency compared to about 30% for a traditional four-stroke. So that's a pretty notable difference. It also means that it allows for a different compression ratio on the engine, and also it allows you to have two top dead centers and two bottom dead centers. So there are numerous improvements across the board from an engineering perspective, and this is one of those things where you can dive into it as deep as you want to in terms of the tech, but speaking to diving into the specific version, Porsche have not released in said patent 
all of the real nitty gritty stuff, such as, for example, the RPM range of the engine is not announced in that particular patent, how they've gotten around certain issues or stuff like harmonic balancing that's not included in the details either. So it's not super in depth if it's something which does come to fruition, which if they're filing the patent, chances are they're trying to pursue it, of course, especially as I said, with their much more compact engines, it makes sense that you'd want to make that as good as it can possibly be, especially looking forward to the future of the car in a combustion sense in particular. Well, I think we probably will see this come back. Porsche doesn't really seem to me to be the kind of brand where they'll just patent it for the sake of no one else doing it. It seems like if they'll do it, they'll want to do it and actually push it to fruition. Ultimately though, that's it for a quick rundown. For those who hadn't seen this news, I hope you found it fascinating. And maybe for those who didn't fully understand what was going on, I hope it might have shed some light on how it works and how it compares to a normal engine. So of course, stick around for more automotive news, both in the gaming world and in real life here on the channel. And of course, I'll see you next time with more. So for now, thanks for watching.